In this video, I'm gonna take you through the eight best veggies to grow in pots for an abundant harvest. And at the end, I'm gonna give you my three best tips for growing veggies in pots and the three things I did wrong when I first started. I've heard so many people say, I'd love to start growing my own veggies, but I don't have enough space. You really do not need it. Space is helpful, it's not necessary. There are so many things to love about growing veggies in pots. The best thing about it is that absolutely anyone can do it. It doesn't matter if you've got a backyard. It doesn't matter if you've even got a balcony. It doesn't matter how much space you have, even if you have no space outdoors at all. Anyone can grow veggies in pretty small pots if you know how to do it. One little disclaimer there, if you have no space outside at all, you are gonna need some grow lights for indoors. So you can buy those online, I'll leave a little link in the description. Another awesome thing about growing in pots is that it can be super cheap. You don't even need to buy pots. There are so many places you can get them recycled for free. Another link I will put in the description if you wanna find out how to do that. Let's start with carrots. Carrots are awesome for growing in pots particularly because they don't always like the same growing conditions as everything else. These are purple carrots, which Chloe, my youngest, is loving eating at the moment. That one's still pretty small. The longer you leave it, the uh, bigger they get. But the reason why I recommend growing them in pots, one, because you can, they grow well in pots, as long as you're, it's got to be deep enough for the roots to obviously grow really deeply down there. So if you want long carrots, you need a really long pot. But um, the other thing is you need a really specific type of soil for carrots. If your soil is too hard, too rocky, they'll just fork and turn out really funny. So you need really loose, fluffy soil for carrots. This way you can just buy a lovely premium potting mix. You know you've got the right balance in there. You can put a little bit of compost in there, but I wouldn't put nearly as much fertilizer in with carrots as I would with other things too much nitrogen and they will fork. Another thing which I'm going to lump in with carrots are beetroot. I haven't got beetroot growing at the moment but I've just pulled a whole lot up which I'll show you a picture of. Oh my god they taste so good and they're so easy to grow in pots. Lettuce is the biggest no-brainer and when I say lettuce I mean any type of lettuce. You can see I've got quite a few different types of lettuces growing in my garden and I use them all the time. The reason why the reason lettuce grows so well in pots is because it doesn't have particularly deep roots. The roots are quite shallow. They don't need a whole lot of space. In fact, I have actually grown a whole lettuce before in a pot that size and that was actually accidental. I just didn't get around to transplanting it but it was amazing as long as I kept giving it a little bit of fertilizer, it had enough nutrients to keep growing and it just kept going and going and going. Most important thing with lettuce is they need lots of water. I've got some rocket. I'm gonna include the rocket in with lettuce. Any types of salad, heaven, yum. These are strawberries, they're not really red yet. You can only pick them when you like this. Strawberries, strawberries are great for growing in pots, particularly because they spread. These ones have just gone in, so these ones certainly haven't started spreading and yet. And we got it from Bunnings. Ruby, what are you doing? <laughs> we did get it. these ones from Bunnings. So strawberries are awesome to grow in pots because they don't need a huge amount of space. That means too when they grow and expand, they're not going to take over the whole garden. Strawberries are one of those foods that need a lot of fertilizer or feeding. Make sure there's lots of compost in that soil, but also make sure you use an additional fertilizer to get Ruby. No, oh, Ruby. <laughs> Ruby. Did she just eat a strawberry? She tried to. Cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people will also put strawberries in hanging baskets, which tend to work quite well and keep the pests away. For you, that pest might be your Labrador. One of the easiest things to grow in pots by a mile is herbs. And anyone who's trying to grow their own food should absolutely add herbs to the list because they make everything taste so much better. So here we've got flat leaf parsley. You can see that pot is a little bit bigger. Here I've got mint. If you're wanting to grow mint, don't put it in the garden because it grows like the kids. 
<laughs> yeah, seriously, you know, it, it grows like a weed. So you put it in the garden, you won't be able to get rid of it. It'll take over everything. So with this one, I literally just took a little bit of mint root that was growing naturally in part of my garden, which the previous owners planted and I haven't been able to get rid of it. I haven't really tried to because it is in quite an isolated part of the garden. Stuck a bit of the root in there, gave it some water and eventually this is what grew. So if you're growing some mint, definitely put mint in pots rather than in the garden. Uh, I would go for a pot that's a little bit bigger than this and don't be afraid to cut it right back anytime it's getting kind of a little bit stringy because it will just keep on growing. You can't kill the stuff. While we're here, basil, oh my God, particularly as we're coming into tomato season, basil makes tomatoes taste so good. Really, really easy one to grow in pots as well. Now, the next one that is awesome to grow in pots is, no, not red amaranth. Yeah, that's working quite well. But I'm actually talking about what's happened naturally down here. These are tomato seeds that have grown naturally. I haven't yet got any tomatoes in pots because they are still all growing in my greenhouse. But this just shows you that the conditions in here are pretty good. Yes, mate. So when I'm ready to plant my other tomatoes in pots, um, I will choose something a little bit bigger than that, but it doesn't really need much bigger than that. The most important thing for tomatoes is that they get heaps of sun and warmth. If it's not warm enough, they won't work. Uh, and also they need lots of fertilizer too. But tomatoes in pots, and that's super exciting because tomatoes are the most fun thing to grow because they're the one thing that you just cannot buy with anywhere near the same flavor. Next up, beans and peas. These are snow peas. You can see just how happy they are. I've got them in two little pots here. Oh, yes, yeah, so we've got heaps of snow peas here. And I have to tell you, snow peas are another one of those things that taste nothing like the ones you get from the supermarket. They are so much yummier. So you can see those pots really aren't very big. Most important thing is to factor in, are they bush varieties or climbing varieties? Climbing varieties will need a trellis to come up. Over here, I have got broad beans. Also in pots, these pots are a bit bigger because the plants get a lot bigger. Lots of flowers on there that haven't yet turned into beans. And over here, broad beans too. Things to remember about peas and beans, because they actually add nitrogen to the soil, they are quite a good companion plant, which means if you plant things around, in and around your beans and peas, they should work quite happily together. Things that need a lot of nitrogen in the soil, like kale, and rock it. So while we're talking about kale, let's stick to kale. Look how shallow this pot is. Super shallow. Roots don't need a huge amount of space, again, as long as they're getting enough nutrients. This kale, happy as Larry. You can see this one over here is already been seriously enjoyed. It sounds like a bit of a boring food kale, but it can be super yummy. Fried up in some garlic and butter or olive oil. You can make chips out of them. I just chop it up really fine and have it in a salad with lemon juice, olive oil, and whatever other yummy salady foods you can find and packed full of nutrients. Again, that pot, not huge. That pot, even smaller. So the three biggest mistakes I made when I first started growing veggies in pots. The first was not using enough compost or not using any compost at all. Soil from the garden, you might be able to grow a little bit, but it won't be rich, abundant foods. You'll look at them and go, why, why don't they look like everyone else's? You need to have either compost or aged manure or a combination of them both for your plants to grow well. So in terms of making sure you've got the right soil, I would buy a premium potting mix from your hardware store or nursery and mix that up with compost. If you've got your own compost you make at home, that is fantastic. If you don't, it doesn't matter, you can buy some. Uh, so I would mix up about 30 to 40% compost with the rest premium potting mix, mix it up really, really well, and then plant your veggies in there. That means you're starting off with a really good amount of nutrients for what you're planting. You will then need a little bit of extra uh, as you go along. And that is tip number two. The second tip is fertilizer. When I first started growing veggies, I had a few people say to me, oh, don't forget to feed your plants. And I had no idea what that meant. And so I kind of ignored it. And sure enough, in the beginning, my veggies just didn't thrive. Now I understand feeding your plants can be a range of different things. It's basically just ensuring they've got plenty of nutrients. You can do it by adding things like compost on top. The easiest way of feeding your veggies though, once you've made sure your soil is really healthy, is by adding a liquid 
fertilizer. You might prefer other types of fertilizers. This is definitely not the only way to go. This is what I do. I follow the instructions on the back, mix three to four catfuls into a full watering can and just give my veggies a sprinkling of liquid fertilizer about every two weeks. Now, that being said, <laughs> hello treasure. So have a read up about what you're growing, but the majority of veggies will do so much better if you give them a sprinkling of this every couple of weeks. And tip number three is simply watering. When you're growing things in small pots, they just dry out quicker. One hot day and they can be completely dry. So you do have to make sure you're right on top of the watering. Easiest way to find out if something needs to be watered is to stick your finger in. And if it goes down about that much into the soil and you're still not feeling any moisture in the soil, definitely needs a water. Our next full garden tour is due to drop in just a few days. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and keep watching. I'm going to leave the link to all of my garden tours. Up there or there or wherever it goes. Don't do my shoes. <laughs>